Hey, which one looks like your beer? I would say this one. The one on my left. This is Budweiser. Here's Coors Extra Gold. Wait, Bud, wait a minute. 58% of Bud drink is preferred Coors Extra Gold in a taste test. Looks like a better beer. And guess what else? What? Coors Extra Gold was a two-time winner at the Great American Beer Festival. It's very impressive. Slow brute for that real beer flavor and color, the way beer was meant to be. Which may be why... Extra Gold beats Bud. Coors Extra Gold. If you're missing real taste, beer is back. Look up beer in the dictionary. You'll probably see a picture of Extra Gold next to it. For the greatest selection and the lowest prices, there's no better time than right now to shop for the holidays during Bill Smith's annual pre-holiday layaway sale. For as little as $10 down, take advantage of incredible savings like these. Seen at 13-inch color TVs, $159. Seen at 19-inch color TVs, just $179. Dramatic 25-inch Zenit stereo receiver monitors, only $499. Plus, big markdowns on Zenit VCRs and widescreens. This year, give a gift that keeps on giving. From Southwest Florida's leader for lower prices and a whole lot more, Bill Smith. Hurry, sale ends Tuesday. This is CBS. It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. Best mix of favorites from the 70s, 80s, and today. Wink 96.9. CNN Headline News, I'm Charles Zewi. The three major U.S. presidential candidates are all going about this weekend trying to win the hearts, minds, and votes of the public. President Bush is in Montgomery, Alabama at this hour. He plans to sign a sweeping energy bill this afternoon in Lafayette, Louisiana. The measure is aimed at reducing U.S. reliance on oil imports. Yesterday, the president issued an executive order designed to make more federal contracts available to non-union labor. Democrat Bill Clinton is pressing the flesh in the Midwest today. He has appearances set in Wisconsin, Iowa, Ohio, and Michigan. Yesterday, the Arkansas governor said the Bush administration has run out of energy and ideas and therefore should be run out of town. Independent candidate Ross Perot will get a taste of life on the campaign trail tomorrow during rallies in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. During a 30-minute television commercial last night, Perot said he's the only candidate Americans can count on to serve their well-being. A new CNN Time Magazine poll shows Bill Clinton is still in the lead in the presidential race, but the numbers suggest the election is far from over. We have more from Eric Gershon. The next president of the United States of America, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton would be the next president if the election were held today, according to a new CNN Time Magazine poll. 41% of registered voters questioned at midweek chose Clinton. A third preferred President Bush while just under one in five picked Ross Perot. Don't let these sorry polls tell you what to think. It's going fine. I'm convinced we're going to win it. There are some people who say that this election is over, they are dead wrong. If you ask who's best at speaking to the issues, the numbers change dramatically. More than 40% of likely voters picked Perot. Clinton polls just over a third. Bush polls less than half of that. International experience is perhaps the president's strongest asset. Asked who would best handle an international crisis, likely voters made President Bush a runaway winner. Clinton pulls less than half of the Bush total, while Perot trails in single digits. This question works for Bush, but CNN political analyst William Schneider says it's just not a question voters really care about. If that were what it's about, we'd, we'd re-elect George Bush. What it's really about is who has the record on the economy that we think shows that they can manage the economy and create economic recovery. The president does place third when likely voters were asked who could best handle the economy. Perot is first, but this poll has a margin of error of plus or minus three percentage points, and that puts Perot in a statistical tie with the Democratic candidate. Right now, both Perot and Clinton are considered uh, equally good candidates for managing the economy, for handling change. That's a real threat to Bill Clinton. It says that Ross Perot is cutting into that change vote. Schneider adds that while Clinton loses more votes to Perot, he has a bigger cushion. Each vote lost by the president hurts him a little bit more. Eric Gershon, CNN reporting. Another poll by ABC News indicates Bill Clinton is very close to becoming the next president. 
Ed claims the Arkansas governor is clearly ahead in enough states to give him 261 electoral votes. 270 are needed to win the presidency. The poll says, for now, President Bush and Ross Perot do not have a clear lead in any state. Communist hardliners are calling for a revival of the Soviet Union. One thousand people rallied in Moscow today, waving flags of the banned Communist Party and singing the Soviet national anthem. They're vowing to oust Russian President Boris Yeltsin's reformist government by backing conservatives in parliament. They also blame Yeltsin for ethnic conflicts in several former Soviet republics. Similar protests took place in other Russian cities today, too. Supporters of Tajikistan's ousted president are trying to restore him to power. Heavy fighting is reported in the capital of Dushanbe. The Interfax News Agency says pro-government forces gained control of the city's center today after storming parliament and the presidential palace. They denounced the interim government, calling it an Islamic fundamentalist junta. The president was forced to resign last month. In the former Soviet Republic of Georgia, one person was killed today in a strong earthquake. U.S. geologists saying it registered 6.7 on the Richter scale. The quake was centered about 55 miles northeast of the capital of Tbilisi. Georgia's prime minister and a rescue team are flying to that remote region. Roads are said to be blocked by rubble. Vietnam says it's doing its best to determine the fate of missing Americans. It's urging the United States to normalize diplomatic relations. Yesterday, President Bush announced Vietnam has agreed to share all its information on more than 2,000 missing U.S. military personnel in Southeast Asia. A U.S. delegation returned from Hanoi earlier this week with several thousand photographs. Some Vietnamese expatriates say they're not impressed by that action. The government of Vietnam is still very corrupted. They, they still have uh, the one-party system. Any investment, any economic or financial aid right now to Vietnam only benefit a small group of people, people who are on top. President Bush says Vietnam's promise to share information on MIAs is only a start toward normalizing relations. Japan's Emperor Akihito visited the Great Wall of China today. It's the first ever trip to China by a Japanese monarch. The emperor spoke at a state dinner in Beijing last night. He says he deeply deplores his Japan's invasion of China during World War II, but he did not issue an apology. CBS News says it has seen evidence to contradict claims that Iraq has no nuclear capability left. The deputy director of the International Atomic Energy Agency made that assertion after visiting Iraq last month. But CBS says weeks before that, the United Nations obtained an enhanced satellite photo showing Iraq could still be working on a bomb. The network states that the IAEA official helped Iraq design its nuclear program before the Gulf War, and now he's the only inspector who claims it no longer exists. Israel's prime minister says he wants peace with Syria in exchange for a partial withdrawal from the Golan Heights. But Itzhak Rabin's bargaining position could be undermined by his shaky political situation. Charles Hoff reports. Yitzhak Rabin just completed his first 100 days as Israel's prime minister. His image soared with expectations he might lead the Jewish state to peace. Today there are problems on the domestic front that could destabilize his government and threaten prospects for peace. This is the moment when he's got to show leadership. He's not lost yet. He's still got many cards to play, but he's really got to stand up now and show that he can do it. Rabin's Labor Party won a resounding victory in the June election, but such winners in Israeli politics always need partners, and Labor's coalition partners are unnatural allies. The partners are the left-wing Merits and the Orthodox Religious Party, Shots. Merits is led by Shulamit Aloni, an outspoken peace and civil rights advocate. She was named education minister. Aloni angered the religious party Shas when she questioned the ban on teaching evolution in Israeli schools and wondered aloud why pupils are only taught the biblical version of creation. You can't have a minister standing up like Mrs. Aloni and saying, in effect, there is no God. Coalition partner Shas had joined the government in support of peace. But Aloni's remarks forced God into the coalition equation. With all due respect to the controversy and to the both sides of the controversy, that's not the issue at the moment. God has to wait to see peace comes first. Rabin now finds himself facing a number of no-confidence motions in the Israeli parliament. He needs both parties to even consider a land-for-peace deal, 
and he needs the legitimacy provided by a religious party. The spiritual leader of Shaft, the man who calls the shots, Rabbi Obadiah Yosef, this regal figure that we see, he's very deeply committed to making peace with the Arabs. Neither Shaft nor Meretz has any better alternative to the present government. All of the players in this argument over God, peace, and power would prefer that this battle had never begun. But there are extraordinary factors ever present in this Jewish state. Charles Hoff, CNN, Jerusalem. In Germany, violence by right-wing youths has broken out for the third straight night. In one northeastern town, about 100 right-wingers and 69 German students hurled gasoline bombs and rocks. Nobody was hurt. Police eventually broke up the mob and detained 11 brawlers. A refugee hostel in Bavaria was also firebombed last night. A Massachusetts teenager has been convicted of murdering his 14-year-old girlfriend. Police say that Jamie Fuller stabbed her to death after she went to the beach with some other youngsters. A defense claimed alcohol and steroid abuse drove him to murder. A 17-year-old faces a mandatory sentence of life in prison without parole. In Rockville, Maryland, a 19-year-old student who cheated on his SATs has been sentenced to six months in jail. Lawrence Adler admitted he paid a friend $200 to take the college entrance exam for him. He was found guilty on two perjury-related charges. The Educational Testing Service says it's the first time anyone has been criminally prosecuted for cheating on the SAT. There's a new twist in telephone sex lines these days. Some are now offered through toll-free 800 numbers. Gary Gabrielle reports the easy access has angered some parents. Janetta and Thomas Montgomery, like most parents, have tried to protect their children from being exposed to pornography, specifically the infamous dial-a-porn phone numbers. That's why they put a 1-900 lock on their telephone. But it seems one company has found a way to get around that lock by using a toll-free 1-800 number. At the end of the message, you'll hear this. Please hang up now and I'll call you back. Collect in just a minute. If you accept that collect call, you'll start paying $2 a minute. <laughs> the Montgomery's three children called the hotline I mean, and they wish they hadn't. At the questions they ask you on when, they, when the, the recorded message where they get, when you go, it's, it's gross. It's really gross. I don't want my kids seeing something like this. I don't want my kids hearing stuff like this. I don't think that's right for a child to hear or see this. What it is, it boils down to it's too easy now for the kid to pick up and call the internet number and then and listen to that filth on the phone. You know, it's, it, just, it just made me so mad when I heard about it, we just had to investigate it. Legislative aide Randy Chin says dial a porn companies now appear to be plying their trade on the 1 800 line. Uh, just today, um, I got a call from someone in the Bay Area who has had a number. Uh, who called an 800 number and was charged back for that as well. It was also pornography, coincidentally. Um, so this is literally, for me, the start of, of, of this trend. Um, we're going to have to deal with it. But there's no word on how those toll-free sex lines can be controlled. The crew on board the shuttle Columbia is getting a little exercise today. The astronauts are taking turns on a specially designed stationary bike to study the effects of weightlessness on the human body. Later, they'll do experiments on blood circulation. The crew got a rousing wake-up call this morning. NASA used the sounds of shake, rattle, and roll to start the day. Coming up next in Dollars and Cents News, what went on in the business world this week and later. A look at a popular Washington, D.C. tourist attraction that may not be what you think it is. Checking Saturday's temperatures. Mild fall weather across the United States. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s over most of the nation, with 50s across northern New England and the Great Lakes region. 60s over the Midwest and Pacific Northwest. This is CNN Headline News. The 92s are going fast, and they're going for up to $10,000 off. I'm Bob Rao, offering you the biggest savings of the year on every 92 vehicle at Charlotte County Lincoln Mercury. $4,000 off every 92 Sable, $6,000 off every 92 Grand Marquis, 
and $7,500 off every 92 Lincoln Town Car and up to $10,000 off on 92 Lincoln Continentals. Selection is limited and going fast. Don't be a day late and thousands of dollars short. Cross over the bridges to close out savings and we'll see you in Punta Gorda. There's a gentle way to get your carpet clean. Call Stanley Steamer. Stanley Steamer's exclusive steam cleaning process is tough on dirt, but gentle on carpet. It even helps carpet last longer, unlike shampooing. That's why leading carpet manufacturers recommend us. Call Stanley Steamer. We're tough on dirt. Gentle on carpet. How about our $49.95 upholstery special? Last time Ole Miss visited Tuscaloosa, Coach Billy Brewer and the Rebels left town with a 22-12 win. This Saturday, the Rebels look to repeat their 1988 performance and close the gap at the SEC West race. But nationally ranked Alabama has one of the best defenses in the country, and points don't come easy at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Sophomore Michael Rogers and the hard-hitting Alabama defense look to pick their way past the Rebels and stay on top of the Western Division. Don't miss Ole Miss at Alabama this Saturday on Wink TV. Do you suffer from Laptus Interruptus? Oh, yeah. This is a bad one, honey. There's a full moon, too, honey. Well, oh. now there's a cure free on your TV. How can you live without this stuff? Just look what it did for this man. People laugh at me all the time. They look like that guy from the ad in the back of the comic books for X-ray specs. That was amazing. They're wackos, let's face it. And they're right here on the HBO Comedy Showcase. Saturday night at 11.30 on Wink TV. This week, there was some good news for the U.S. economy, bad news for several airlines, and mixed news for the auto industry. We have added more from Jim Dexter. Just in time for the election, there was finally some good economic news for the Bush administration to report. September housing starts reached a half-year high, and new claims for unemployment insurance hit a two-year low. Now, this is a good sign. We still got big problems, but that's a good sign. Good sign or not, independent presidential candidate Ross Perot claimed more trouble is on the way. During Monday's debate, Perot predicted a banking crisis that will rival the savings and loan mess. That claim brought quick denials. It's complete bunk, uh, electioneering. Uh, the banks have $250 billion worth of capital. Uh, when the SNLs got into trouble, they had virtually none. After months of pre-production hoopla, Chrysler officially introduced its LH cars. To add to the celebration, the number three automaker announced a $200 million summer quarter profit. Chrysler had record minivan sales in the midst of a recession, which partially accounts for it. They've had a spectacular success with the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Things were in a lower gear at General Motors. GM spent the week fending off reports Chairman Robert Stemple may be bounced and that the 95-year-old Oldsmobile division is nearing the end of the road. Sears couldn't count on profits. The number three U.S. retailer reported its first quarterly loss in nearly 60 years. Sears blames the red ink on its Allstate insurance unit, which had to pay huge claims after Hurricane Andrew and Hurricane Aniki. With Halloween on its way, the fair wars are coming back to haunt the airline industry. Several major airlines reported big summer quarter losses. Pilots at Northwest accepted a pay cut, and Delta announced plans to lay off 200 pilots and cut back on airliner purchases. Experts still think the industry can pull out of its tailspin. Uh, the key is to avoid another uh, all-out fair war has happened this year. A mouse defeated a lion, and even though the Walt Disney Company was involved, it wasn't any fairy tale. MGM had claimed that Disney violated a 1985 trademark agreement by making movies at the MGM Disney Studios theme park in Florida. The lawsuit went to court and a judge decided that MGM's arguments were strictly Mickey Mouse. That was the week in business. I'm Jim Dexter, CNN reporting. Headline Sports is next. This is CNN Headline News. Why wait years to enjoy the beauty of a mature palm, large citrus, or tropical fruit-bearing tree? 
R.S. Walsh & Sons Tree Exchange is a unique nursery specializing in mature specimen trees and specialty palms. Choose from a wide array of large native trees, palms, and fruit-bearing varieties that will make a beautiful statement about your landscape. And for the distinctive touch, see their selection of high-quality hand-painted and terracotta pottery. R.S. Walsh & Sons Tree Exchange, adding beauty and value to your home. Hi, we're Alexander and Bennett from Wink 96.9. And it's watch and win time again because we're giving away $500 every weeknight. To enter, send in your name and address on a handwritten postcard to I Want to Win, care of Wink TV at this address. Then watch us on the Wink News at 6 to see if your name is called. If it is, you'll have 11 minutes to call and claim your $500. The contest starts Monday, so hurry and get those postcards to Wink. And watch us on the Wink News at 6 for your chance to win. Not everyone likes Wink TV's call for action reporter Patrick Comer. I don't want him to come. Because Patrick Comer's job is to expose ripoffs and fraud. Gross negligence, incompetence, misconduct, fraud, and or deceit. And getting victims some satisfaction. How do you feel now? Satisfied, thank you. Watch Call for Action with Patrick Comer. Saturdays at 7.30 on Wink TV. He's on your side. My wife fell off a cliff about 75 feet. Was it an accident or was it murder? We believe he murdered his wife. I did not murder my wife. Then why did it take Randy Boyd three hours to hike down a mountain that took my crew only 45 minutes? Joyce held insurance for about $450,000, $460,000. Till death do us part on the next A Current Affair Extra. A Current Affair Extra, Sunday morning at 11 on Wink TV. with CNN Headline Sports. It's do or die tonight for the Atlanta Braves, trailing three games to two. The Braves will send Steve Avery to the mound up against David Cohn for the Jays. Cohn's been shaky in the postseason while Avery was sharp last time out. Still, Atlanta faces tremendous odds trying to rebound from that 3-1 deficit. Yeah, well, we definitely wanted to win it back there. Uh, it just uh, didn't work out. Atlanta came out and played a great game against us, and uh, we got two games here and uh, got Cohen and Guzzi going for us, so I think everybody feels pretty good about our chances. You've faced Steve Avery once before. What kind of adjustments are you going to make uh, for him uh, for this time around? Well, we're going to hit him. <laughs> <laughs> we got to hit him, you know. That's what it's all about. So. What is it that he does that, that makes him so effective, or made him so effective in that previous game? Mm. Uh, I think just it, almost everyone has pitched well in this series. Both teams, so... Uh, Unlike, uh, you know, not to break ranks, uh, he just pitched a good game and uh, they played enough defense and, you know, that's what it is. I mean, pitching can negate good hitting sometimes. Other baseball news, the Florida Marlins have named their first ever skipper. As expected, it's Renee Latchman. He will be in the dugout for their inaugural season. It's a reported three-year deal for $1 million and there's another interesting clause in the contract. According to the Fort Lauderdale Sun Sentinel, Latchman will not get any calls from the front office during the game in the dugout, and that could be a first. The Reds are in the market for a skipper. It could be this guy, Davey Johnson, the former Mets manager. Johnson has been interviewed by new GM Jim Balden, but there are at least five other candidates under consideration. NHL, the Rangers are undefeated in their last 11 at home going back to last year after skating to a 3-3 tie with the Canadians last night at the Garden. Dennis Savard's power play goal with just under six minutes to go. Knotted things up. Savard also had two assists. The Capitals continue to struggle early on. They fall to the Islanders 5-2 at home. Ray Ferraro had two goals. Washington has lost five straight. Buffalo rallied the top San Jose 5-4. Pat LaFontaine's goal with just over a minute left in the contest proved to be the game winner. Darren Shannon had two goals in the Jets' win over the Kings. Joe Juno scored twice. As the Bees beat Edmonton at Northlands, the Oilers are 1-7-1. It's their worst start since joining the NHL in 1979. Early college football starts on this Saturday. Top-ranked Miami is in Blacksburg for a Big East game against the Hokies. Syracuse travels to Temple. And NC State's hosting Clemson in an ACC showdown. Paul Runnels, CNN Headline Sports. This is CNN Headline News.
The best mix of favorites from the 70s, 80s, and today. Wink, 96.9. Actress Elizabeth Taylor is being rewarded for what's being called her enormous contributions to America's film heritage. The American Film Institute says it will honor Taylor with its Lifetime Achievement Award during a nationally televised ceremony in March. The Academy Award-winning actress joins a distinguished group of past recipients, including Henry Fonda, Betty Davis, Barbara Stanwyck, and Sidney Poitier. The Waltons Museum opens today in the town that inspired the 1970s TV series, officials in Schuyler, Virginia. Hope the recreations of parts of the family house and the general store will attract tourists. The museum will also feature clips from the CBS drama and interviews with cast and crew members. The White House, the Smithsonian Institution, and the National Monuments are all some of Washington, D.C.'s most popular tourist attractions, but there are a lot of others. Catherine Steele looks at one neighborhood in particular. The tour of Embassy Row is a popular attraction in Washington's Calorama neighborhood. The walking tour averages about 1,500 visitors each year, and this year is no exception. The Woodrow Wilson House is first on the tour. President Wilson bought the home in 1920 as a surprise for Edith, his second wife. After their death, the house became a historic landmark and was open to the public in 1963. In the drawing room, visitors can view Wilson's many awards and trophies. The dining room is still decorated with authentic furnishings from the early 1900s. If it seems almost eerie, legend has it that the house is haunted. So many historic house museums, people tend to think they're haunted. And ours especially, because as a visitor walks through this house, you really get a sense that the Wilsons may have just stepped out for their, one of their daily afternoon rides. The backyard was made into a classical garden that can be entered directly from the second floor. It makes a beautiful setting for tourists who want to relax before trekking on to the next home. After the Wilson House, it's on to some of the embassies along the way. Since 1954, this home has been the residence of the Ambassador of Pakistan. This 1963 townhome is now the Embassy of Belize. And this home was designed by the same architect who designed the National Archive and the Jefferson Memorial. Today, it's the residence of the Ambassador of Brazil. But one of the most popular homes on the tour is the residence of the Ambassador of France. Here, visitors can tour rooms with Louis XV furnishings or admire 17th century paintings on loan from the museums of Versailles. Tour directors hope visitors who view Embassy Row will celebrate the history of Washington while also discovering the history and artifacts of countries around the world. Catherine Steele, CNN, reporting. Don't forget to set your clocks back an hour before you go to bed tonight. For most Americans, daylight savings time ends at 2 a.m. tomorrow. Clocks should then read 1 a.m. While that means an extra hour of sleep tonight for many people, it also means an extra hour of work for people who work the overnight shift and another hour for the politicians tomorrow. Here's a look now at what's ahead on CNN Headline News. Bill Clinton holds steady in the polls, while President Bush tries to energize his campaign on a swing through the South. And it's day three in space for the astronauts aboard the shuttle Columbia. We'll have those stories and a lot more in two minutes. Thanks for joining us. I'm Charles Zewe, Around the World in 30 Minutes. This is CNN Headline News. This is CNN Headline News. The least expensive tires in Lee County are still the inspected, guaranteed, high-tread used tires at Johnny Myers Discount Tires. We stock over 2,000 used tires priced from $5. Listen to News Talk 1240 Wink AM Radio for complete coverage of the World Series. It's the Braves slugging it out against the Blue Jays from CBS Radio Sports and News Talk 1240 Wink AM Radio.
Hi, we're Alexander and Bennett from Wink 96.9. And it's watch and win time again because we're giving away $500 every weeknight. To enter, send in your name and address on a handwritten postcard to I Want to Win, care of Wink TV at this address. Then watch us on the Wink News at 6 to see if your name is called. If it is, you'll have 11 minutes to call and claim your $500. The contest starts Monday, so hurry and get those postcards to Wink. And watch us on the Wink News at 6 for your chance to win. Is this what goes on in every house where step parents are involved? What happens when your stepmother becomes your worst enemy? I am not giving up on my daughter. Children are selfish. They're selfish. I really think that you are the one that's being the This stepdaughter says she did everything to leave home, even attempt suicide. I just tried to cut my wrist. Is it possible for stepmoms and stepkids to ever get along? On the next Maury Povich Show. The Maury Povich Show, Monday morning at 9 on Wink TV. Thursday, a cop and his wife say they don't run a brothel, but they won't be too happy after our investigation. And on the next Inside Edition, the drunk driver who made mothers mad is convicted again. Watch Inside Edition. Inside Edition, Monday at 7 on Wink TV. Partly cloudy skies throughout the weekend, and it'll be less windy than it has been.